Welcome to the Possibility Hub video series. I'm Carol Talbot, the creator and founder of the Possibility Hub, an advocate for awakening, encouragement, and creating opportunities for an expansion of awareness and consciousness. In this episode, I'm in conversation with detoxification and cellular rejuvenation specialist, Malcolm Sliper. Now, Malcolm has traveled extensively, seeking out various healing modalities, and the core of his interest lies in restoring natural balance and harmony through detoxification and through a simple three-pillar method. In this session, you'll discover your five organs of elimination and how to ensure they're functioning fully. Hello, Malcolm. Welcome back. And I'm excited to dig deeper into this detox series that we're doing. And last week, we started the sessions with digging ourselves out of that hole. And I know today we're moving a little deeper into that three pillar process that you have into the five organs of elimination. So maybe we should start with a sort of little recap before we go into those five organs of elimination. Great stuff. Thanks, Carol. And i um, delighted to be back and to uh, share these um, thoughts and ideas with you. Um, so yeah, going back uh, to where we, we picked up or we left off last week, um, if we look at the, the, what we're trying to achieve, which is either to correct an issue that's, um, that's come off the rails in some aspect of our health, uh, to regain that vibrant health, um, or to expand our consciousness, as you said, we adopt a, a very simple philosophy to achieve this, to, to clean the body up at a core level. And um, using the, the three pillar method, which essentially is to uh, stop, stop digging the hole deeper, um, avoid the non-human foods and try and align ourselves towards the foods that will encourage and bring about vibrant health. Second aspect of it um, was to clean up the organs of elimination, which is where we are today. And then later we'll get on to talking about cleaning up the possibility of human parasites. So when we address all of these three together and we do this pre-cleanse phase over the space of four to six weeks, um, it prepares us to go into a, an easy fast and have an easy fasting experience. And that is where um, the, the core of the work is done. Um, but by cleaning up these organs of elimination, we prepare ourselves for uh, not only the fast, but we also encourage a lot more vibrancy um, and function within our day. I love the fact that we're doing this pre-cleanse before we go into fasting, which is such a, a phenomenal way to reset the body and allow it to do what it's really good at. And you see so many people just going straight into a fast without that preparation phase. And really mm. they're doing themselves a disservice. They're not really getting the maximum that they could out mm. of, out of a, a a real good detox. So let's dive straight into these five organs of elimination. And maybe you want to say what those five organs are and, and how they work and, and how we can sort of prepare them for eliminating effectively and efficiently. Sure. Um, yeah, it uh, often prompts the question and people go, well, what are the five organs? And they start to, to um, to run through the list of what they think they are. And um, sometimes it surprises people to learn that they've got five organs of elimination. And um, as, as you were saying with this preparation um, is done to prepare us for a fast because often when we jump into a fast or someone jumps into a fast, not having done the preparation, the fast becomes derailed. So the easy way to prepare us for the fast is to go through this preparatory process of cleaning up these five organs. Um, so um, the best way to look at it is to, to look at the human body, have an analogy of the human body being a machine. And just like any machine out there, whether it be a car, um, an airplane, a vacuum cleaner, whatever they are, all these things have got filters. And um, these filters, if they get clogged up, the machine doesn't run so well. So uh, our task is to look within and identify what these filters are and then 
go about in an easy, uncomplicated method of cleaning them up. Um, so in a nutshell, the five filters, there's actually a sixth system, um, but we'll come back to that because it's actually the master system, um, which uh, really steers where these five go. And um, in a nutshell, so the five um, organs per se, or, or uh, realms of elimination, um, the first, and it's the easiest one to address is the lungs. So um, we obviously uh, use the lungs to draw oxygen in and to give off um, metabolic gases, metabolic waste, but also um, the lungs becomes a dumping ground for mucus if there's an excess of mucus in the body or um, other organs are clogged. The, the lungs could be used to throw up mucus. And we see that often when we're ill or we've got flu. So that's the first. Um, the um, next one worth looking at um, is the, um, the bowel. Um, so this includes the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. Um, this, these three organs all that we'll, we'll summarize and we'll discuss as being um, the bowel, we're calling the bowel, um, they are there more to get rid of digestive waste as opposed to, to metabolic waste. Um, and um, people traditionally go through all methods um, to, to clean up this, uh, this area, this realm, and they generally focus on the colon. So uh, they'll go and do colonics. Um, but the fact of the matter is the colon is three to six feet long and the colonic only gets into a portion of that. It doesn't get into all 23 feet of the small intestine. So we have to use other methods to clean out the small intestine. Um, people, um, or as, as we consume foods that we're not designed to, to consume, the body responds in a way as almost as if it's been poisoned and it creates a mucus layer that protects itself from whatever it is that's this encumbrance that's come in. Um, and this mucus then starts to coat all 23 feet of the small intestine and eventually the large intestine. Um, and as this layer of, of um, mucus or uh, accumulation, um, some people refer to it as mud because it looks like mud when it comes out. Um, when it lines the, the small intestine, it prevents um, or hinders the absorption of foods and nutrients. Um, so what we'll often find that as it becomes more and more clogged up, um, we have this appetite, this voracious appetite, and you eat like a horse and you're not really nourishing your body. But once this is cleaned up, then um, we, we only need, or we need much smaller amounts of uh, food and nutrition to satisfy the needs. Um, so it's actually one of the easier realms to, um, to clean out and we use various tools to do that and colonics are possibly one of the tools. Um, I generally favor a herbal formula which does a magnificent job because it starts right from the top of the small intestine, uh, works all the way down to the colon. It's much cheaper than a colonic, whereas as you know, colonics are what, $70, $80 a, a pop and um, what if I do for myself? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's um, fine. I actually prefer to do my own because, um, you know, being British, we like the privacy. Yeah. Uh, are you also thinking of the intestinal bulldozers that you have developed? Or are you thinking, well, I'm remembering some other, uh, and I'll call it stuff, um, <laughs> <laughs> that it came in a pot. I, I was just cleaning out my fridge the other day and there's just a little bit left. Um, and it looks like mud. Uh, and it you, you take it as a spoonful and it tastes absolutely disgusting. But because it was solid, I used to almost treat it like a tablet, just pop it down and swallow it like a tablet. But it was absolutely in incredible. And looking at the label, all the things that it had in it and was doing was just 
tremendous. So I know there was that, but I know also that you've recently developed this intestinal bulldozer that is absolutely um, incredible. I always have some in, in the house uh, because I know that with many clients, they feel bunged up is <laughs> a nice way of putting it <laughs> or have digestive issues and of course we both work with uh, a wonderful little um, healer called cambo and i know if i feel people haven't had a powerful powerful purge or that there's something still left i will often give them intestinal bulldozers to take um, later or the next day just to really cleanse and clean their system so is this what you were alluding to yeah, um, the intestinal bulldozer is something that I've um, been using over many, many years to achieve exactly uh, the, the goal that you've, uh, the, um, the effect that you expanding on here. It's always such a, a savory topic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's always one that people avoid, and yet it is so core, uh, it is such a core function to who we are. Because I know. if that function stops, your health comes to a grinding health very quickly. Well, basically, you, you're full of shit. Um, and, you know, this is what always worries me, because when people are not eliminating effectively and are still eating, it means that food is rotting in your That's system. It. And you only it. have to look at food that you leave out or, you know, you know, when it goes off and the smell and how it festers and... And that's happening in you. I think that should be something for concern. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also, when we, when instead of eliminating the waste, when we're reabsorbing it, it's begging for further issues within the body. And the body doesn't thrive when it's literally recirculating its its waste. It's the equivalent of going to the bathroom in the kitchen. You know, going for. <laughs> for a, <laughs> going for a dump in the kitchen um, the, so it just um, it just doesn't lend itself to uh, to vibrant health and the moment that that um, realm is repaired or, or corrected good health tends to ensue and uh, this goes back to my my philosophy and my model and that is that if we can get all the waste within the body draining down and out which is the way that it's meant to go good health ensues the moment any one of these um, elimination organs becomes clogged up, another elimination organ has to pick up the slack um, and the waste starts to back up. And when this metabolic or this um, eliminated waste backs up, uh, problems ensue. And as we'll dive into in a little while, we'll see that part of the, uh, this eliminated process deals with the realm of lymph. And um, essentially what lymph is, if you look at every single cell in the human body, there's roughly some estimates, <laughs> give or take a few. Um, there are about 100 trillion cells in the human body. And every single cell has to be nourished. And every single cell has to eliminate its waste. In other words, it's got to poop. So they, it's got to be fed and it's got to, it's got to poop. So this poop has got to go somewhere. This waste, this eliminated waste has to go somewhere. And um, Bit of a misconception within the medical model is that it goes back into the bloodstream and it doesn't. There's a very, very specific pathway that it takes uh, with a, a, um, a corrective process as it goes because that acid, that waste coming off the cell is extremely acidic. So that acidity has to be raised to a reasonable pH to be tolerated later in the system and finally eliminated. And uh, the essential pathway that it takes. Uh, that this waste effectively comes out is through the skin and through the through the kidneys and when the kidneys are clogged then this lymph um, needs to be directed elsewhere or it backs up into the system and when you have acidic waste getting uh, becoming stagnant in the system uh, this lends itself to the destruction of other cells and uh, we know this um, to manifest eventually in the form of tumors and cancers as um, as the acids literally burn the cell. I, I, you were speaking about the lymph, and I always refer to the lymph system as the body's vacuum cleaner. Um, you know, so blood is moved and pumped by, by the heart, but the lymph is through breath. And you talked about the lungs as being uh, one of the organs of elimination. 
Um, and I know when I run breathwork sessions, there's usually a little bit of a rush to the bathroom afterwards, because of course, with, with the breathing and moving that lymph fluid around, um, you know, people need to eliminate. And the also wonderful thing about breathwork is not just elimination sort of through the bathroom, uh, people also notice different temperature changes when they're doing breath work. They can sweat profusively. They can also get cold as well. And it can bring up a lot of emotions. So it's eliminating in so, so many different beautiful ways. Very powerful, isn't it? Yes. So we've got the lungs, we've got the bowels, which are the large intestine, small intestine. Uh, we've got the skin also as a, an elimination organ and kidneys. Are we missing one here? I'm going back to the skin. Uh, the skin is interesting because it's both the largest organ of elimination and assimilation. So in other words, it takes things in. In other words, what we put onto it. And it also gives off, as we've um, alluded to now, lymphatic waste comes out. Um, when the system is clogged, you'll see that it'll give off some really noisy, gnarly stuff. There's some really oozy, stinky, smelly stuff that, that tends to come out the skin. Um, so it behooves us to make a concerted effort to keep the skin, uh, firstly, stop poisoning it, stop putting things in. And um, it's a very simple analogy that I like to make is um, don't put things on your skin that you wouldn't put in, in your mouth. Um, because it's going straight in and it's, it has to be processed and detoxed and cleansed out. So that's a, a really simple way to look at it. So is body brushing good for that as well to kind of like uh, stimulate uh, the skin? Yeah, body brushing is a, a long held tradition for cleaning out the lymph. That's a fantastic way. One of the best ways I've found um, if one can get one's hands on an infrared sauna. Saunas are generally good and that's why in these uh, northern Scandinavian countries in the cold and Cold North, they, they uh, really enjoy saunas. Um, but an infrared sauna works so much more effectively than the more conventional sauna because the infrared frequencies penetrate deep into the sebacretious gland and then they push out deeply held toxins that are held in the sebacretious layers of, um, of, of the skin and it brings it out. The very first time um, Sorry, go ahead. I used an infrared sauna, the, the, the effect that I felt was like night and day. I remember walking out of that sauna and in those days leading up to it, I remember as a child, I would never sweat. And I sort of took it as a thing of pride that um, in a PT session or in the military that they could push you around and I wouldn't sweat. So I, I thought this was a reflection of my stamina. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not true. When I got into an infrared sauna, um, the first time it started to open up the body's ability to sweat and it was really, really profound. Um, and I walked out of there feeling like a million bucks. And I was so impressed with the effects and the vibrancy that came afterwards that I actually went and bought one of these and I keep it at home and make frequent use of it. And of course, that's useful um, when you're getting rid of um, toxins and heavy metals from the body to pop a couple of niacin um, and either go running, walking or do some exercise and go in a sauna because it brings it all out of the skin. Um, and of course, you know, being in the Middle East here, I only have to stand outside for a few minutes and I'm sweating, uh, except, you know, when you've just popped some niacin, um, you feel certain areas of your body you can see the red marks where the, the metals and toxins need to come out so that's uh, another thing to take on a uh, regular basis yeah i remember a few years back i was i was doing quite a lengthy uh, cleanse a deep fast and i woke up at two in the morning and i was itching all over my body my skin was alive it was red it was um it, and i was quite concerned because <laughs> this was entirely unexpected and um, thinking back on, on how to get myself out of this, I realized that the, the body was using the skin as a dumping ground to get rid of what it could be metals, it could have been anything. So I got into the infrared sauna, sat in there for 30 minutes. When I got out, it was as if nothing had happened. It was, you know, the, the skin had restored itself back to where it was pre this incident. So it was quite remarkable how, how deeply that sauna worked at pulling gunk that the body was attempting to eliminate, but just couldn't do it fast enough. Wow. Wow. So get a sauna and particularly an infrared one. Now, kidneys, in terms of eliminating the kidneys, that would be obviously to drink a lot of water. 
um, which some people, I, I'm always surprised that people find that challenging. And we live in such a coffee culture. I'm very blessed because I don't like coffee. Um, and maybe I'll have one cup of tea a day, but that's also without caffeine. I, I like rooibos very much. So that's my tea of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so water, is that the way to eliminate the kidneys? And I've also heard somebody say parsley tea is also very good for helping the kidneys. Um, again, um, going back and looking at the kidneys, they're the hardest working filter within the body, the hardest working organ. And they'll often be the last, they'll give symptoms of distress in the final hour at failing when they really are. Uh, deep in distress. So you won't really know that they're in distress. Um, but what they do is they filter out. Um, you know, ultimately, they'll filter the dissolved rock that we've um, consumed, whether we've drank it in the form of the liquids we've had or the foods. And um, ultimately, these dissolved rocks uh, will clog up this, this, this very, very delicate filtering system. So our methods that we use have to have ways of dissolving rock. And, oh, so uh, this is like the kidney stones. These are kidney that. stones, little crystals. Yeah, I, I refer to them as, as, as tiny rock because yeah, that's essentially what they are. And um, you'll find people who live on farms or have access to borehole water or, or underground water, you'll find it's often rich in lime. And that lime coats the arteries and eventually it clogs up these. Um, wow. So one wants to find a method that will dissolve these crystalline structures out of the kidneys. And um, you've touched on the, the use of parsley. Watermelon is another good one because it cleans kidneys. Um, and again, I've always to say again. Apple juice um, and grapefruit juice. Um, Ultimately, these are great ways of hydrating the body, but they don't particularly have uh, qualities that are directly, okay. uh, they're, they're, I consider them to be excellent forms of hydration because we should be getting our liquids uh, from fruit and our minerals from the fruit because these fine, um, the, the, um, the tree structures and the root structures will take the water up and take the minerals out of the ground and uh, process those minerals and eventually dump them into the fruit and we consume the fruit. We, we're getting the finest uptake of, of minerals, but also hydrating ourselves. Um, but going back to the cleansing of the kidney, what I've found works uh, well is to identify various herbs uh, that are really famous for cleaning up the kidneys. And when we start to use these herbs, they generally tend, tends to be a longer process. So you'll it'll take four to six weeks on herbal formulas that'll clean the kidneys. But over those four to six weeks, uh, they'll clean the kidneys up and you'll find your, um, your um, ability to urinate uh, becomes better. You'll have more, more frequent urination and the flow will be stronger as well. Do you um, also advocate certain water over others? And I say that because, you know, big bars around ionized water and yet, um, and there's also deuterium depleted water um, to talk about. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, that's um, gaining traction. But I know with the ionized water um, and some of the devices and machines um, and making sure, you know, the right alkaline acid balance. Um, I do recall having water in a jug, but it had been left there a while. And I noticed that it created a scale on the inside of the jug. And mm. that really caught my attention. I thought, hmm, interesting. If it's creating a scale on a jug, what's that water doing in my body? That's right. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is such a core topic that you've, uh, you've touched on. And when we're talking about cleaning the, the kidneys, uh, it all gravitates back to the liquids we're taking in and seeking out the optimum form of water. Now, there's an enormous amount of debate as to what the ideal water is, which is what you're alluding to. Yes. Um, so people will come up with all manner of theories and all concoctions and devices to create what they believe to be the best form of water. Um, 
The scale you're referring to is generally the mineralization that, that occurs either on the, um, the inside of the container or typically your kettle. So if you want to have a, an idea, um, a snapshot of what's happening in your body, have a look at the inside of your kettle. <laughs> yeah. And now I've looked at all manner, all manner, all, all different types of water. And I've tried different types. I paid three and a half thousand dollars for a Kangen machine. I used it for about six weeks and I put it in the um, in the storeroom and hadn't used it for years. And eventually I sold it to someone else for half the price. Um, but I always return to distilled water. And uh, there's a lot of controversy about distilled water. And one of the myths that uh, that is perpetuated is that it leaches minerals from the body. Now, this is untrue. What it does is it leaches inorganic minerals. So these are minerals that shouldn't be in the body. And typically, if you use min, uh, distilled water in your kettle on a continuous basis, you won't get that scaling. But the beautiful thing about uh, distilled water is that it has this cleansing effect to the kidneys. It erodes or um, dissolves the accumulated rock that is built up in the kidneys, and then it gets passed out. So distilled water over a long period of time is probably the finest way to keep uh, the uh, kidneys in tip-top condition. And then if you're, you're having distilled water, you do need to make sure that you're getting um, your minerals through another source. I'm an advocate for the minerals coming from the food from yes. uh, either the vegetables or the, the fruits. And the fruit is the finest place to be getting the minerals because as we mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, the root structure of the tree um, is designed to take inorganic minerals from the ground and turn them into organic minerals that we can consume. That's what, that's what the plant world does for us. Um, so dissolving minerals into the water and drinking it, um, all that's going to do is clog up the filters of the body. So the five organs of elimination, I just want to make, because I'm not clear if we're counting um, another one as separate. I've got the lungs, uh, I've got the bowels, but does is the bowels separate to the large intestine and the small intestine? I, when we talk of the bowels, I, I uh, refer to them as being the small and, and large intestine. Oh, okay, so that's the second uh, organ of elimination. Then there's the skin, there's the kidneys, and then one more? There's one more, and that's the liver. Uh, yes, yeah. I was waiting for the liver. I couldn't believe if you're going to leave the liver out, because that is so important. Okay. What, uh, um, you know, we really should give a round of applause to our livers, because they do so much they have so many roles, and I don't think people honour their livers enough. <laughs> I'm in awe at how much abuse the liver can take. And, uh, you look at your friends who drink a lot, as an example, and their livers get hammered, and yet they <laughs> still keep going. Um, and the amazing thing about the liver is that it regenerates itself. It's one of the, the few organs of the body that really that will regenerate itself. And uh, for that reason... Um, parasites like to set up home in the liver because they've got themselves a little hotel in there. They've got, <laughs> they've got love. They've got a constant source of nutrition that just re replenishes itself. And they um, hate it when you fast. It's like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. So our next talk will go about, uh, on, we'll elaborate on, on parasites and how to get rid of them. Um, and dealing with parasites in the liver is, is part of the issue. Um, but the liver is a fascinating organ. It's uh, two kilograms, roughly an average human, it's two kilograms in size, sits on the right hand side of the body. But the amazing thing about it is that it can go through so much abuse and it can regenerate itself. Yeah. It also, uh, what's fascinating about it, it's the pharmacy of the body and it has roughly 500 different functions um, that it, uh, it, um, it takes care of in the body. So it really, it behooves us to look after it, to nurture it and um, to, to clean it up because it also needs cleansing um, and in that way, uh, maintain it and look after it. Yeah, and say thank you and a prayer to your liver. It does a lot for you. So now we've got those five organs of elimination. Um, 
and and we've as we've talked about more we've suggested some sort of uh, pathways what to take maybe what not to take but as an overall what would you suggest you know we we've done part one in the three pillars was you know digging yourself out of that hole looking at eating the right food um, not digging the ditch even deeper. Now we've got those five organs of elimination and allowing them to work at the optimum. What are some sort of really, what are sort of a number of steps that people can do that will, you know, start to help them eliminate more effectively and, and get their organs thanking them? Um, well, this is where our, our concept of the pre cleanse comes in because. If we embark upon this process of what I call a pre-cleanse over um, a 30 or 40 day period, and during this period, we tackle each of these organs respectively. So the lungs, we know if we're not a smoker, there's not much we need to do. Um, perhaps get outside, get more fresh air, can enjoy some breathing exercise or breath work as, as you uh, suggested. So that one's taken care of. Um, the, the, the big one that I find with most people, um, with a lot of people, I won't say most people because everyone's different, um, but the first one to tackle is to get the bowels functioning. Yes, and yes. as we touched on last week, ideally for every meal um, consumed, the bowel should rough, give or take roughly move, say within an hour. Um, some people only have a bowel movement once a day, some only once a week or worse, as you had, uh, you had touched on. So to get the, the bowel to become more regular, we use that bowel formula that we'd mentioned, the intestinal bulldozer. And uh, the intestinal bulldozer is not a laxative per se. Um, all it does is it stimulates the system. Uh, it's like exercising a muscle. It, it stimulates the peristaltic motion to be able to move um, the digestive way through in an in a, an ideal and optimum period. So um, at very least, the person should be having a bowel movement a day. And that if they're not having that, that bowel formula will help them do that. So that's the foundation of it. If the bowel isn't moving once a day, we have a problem and um, we need to, to work to correct that. And the bowel formula is that. From and the intestinal bulldozers are available on the artofdetox.com website, right? They're available. Um, in the US um, on the, uh, from the Art of Detox website, but we do ship uh, worldwide through a secondary service. Uh, those of uh, those folk that are lucky enough to be in South Africa, we have a supplier who uh, ships in South Africa, which is quite a, a fortunate um, win in that realm. Um, so once, the, once we've got the bowel moving, this allows us to begin to tackle the concept of parasites because you can't be attempting to kill, kill off parasites or get rid of parasites if you're recirculating your waste. So at this stage, once the bowel is moving once a day, uh, we're going to start to make use of a, um, an appropriate dewormer on a daily basis, and that will start tackling the parasite issue. As we're dealing with this over this month long period, we're going to work because cleaning the, the, uh, the kidney takes a while. Um, we're going to start from day one, tackling the kidneys using a kidney formula. And um, over the 30 day period, the kidneys will become more and more efficient um, at doing what they do best. And so then the liver, the liver, is there a particular liver formula? Um, there's no direct liver formula. My approach to cleaning the liver is a two-step process. The first is to get, um, the problem with, that we find with the liver is that it accumulates stones with it. And these stones clog the little bile ducts and pathways. So um, our first task is to open up the, these pathways and get these stones moving. And once they're moving, our next task is to keep them moving. So some people will go and do these liver cleansers again and again and again. And some of them are quite, quite intense to, to do. To I know. No, they're not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good to <laughs> live alone. <laughs> as, as you know, with that one, you've got to keep the bathroom around for the whole of the next day. <laughs> so opening up the liver. We can't work with the little stones, or we can't clean, um, we, we can't attempt to clean the liver without, uh, without getting a parasite cleanse going first. Because there's some schools of thought out there saying that 
the heart of those little stones is actually a parasite. But the parasites will also clog up. And these are typically the flukes will clog up the liver. So for the first 15 days of this pre-cleanse, we prepare the liver with a parasite cleanse. And then we do one of these dreaded bile Epsom salt cleanses um, in conjunction with the olive oil. So we only need to do one or two. And their purpose is to get that first um, stream of stones moving out. Once those stones are, are trickling down and out, we can keep up that uh, trickling effect. We can keep those stones moving by consuming a tablespoon of olive oil at night before we go to bed. And it's that stimulation of the olive oil that commands bile from the bile, uh, from the gallbladder, that then gets injected into the bile ducts and that keeps the stones moving. So our first task is to get the stones moving and that we do the, uh, the Epsom salt cleanse and then after that, just keep them moving. And that over a period of time, using these plant fats, um, we have the ability to dissolve the uh, accumulated stones and accumulated bile uh, within the liver. Wow. Okay, and we're still in the pre-cleanse phase. So we've alluded already to the next session, which is um, a big topic. And as far as I'm concerned, one of the most important to topics, which is parasites. And that I'm always shocked when people have never done a parasite cleanse, have never taken anything to rid themselves of, of parasites. Um, I think I may have mentioned before, you know, I grew up with a lot of animals and my mother, um, you know, regularly, uh, you know, dewormed the animals. And she said, well, as a family, we didn't know it, but we were all dewormed. Um, you know, she put tablets or herbs and things in, in the food. So we were done on a regular basis. And I found that most parents that I've spoken to never consider doing that for their children. And it can have some very detrimental effects if they haven't thought about uh, a parasite cleanse. So it's an important session that we'll be talking about next time. And first, it's digging yourself out of that hole with changing your diet, a lot more fruit in there. And then uh, the understanding the five organs of elimination and, and getting them working effectively. Is, is, is that what you'd agree with, Malcolm? Is that that's the a, nutshell? That's a fantastic overview. Um, so by finding the, uh, the, the ideal foods, we are not making the situation worse as, as we've uh, expanded upon. Um, but as soon as the body senses that there's a cleaner um, food source that's coming in and, and generally a food that's, that, that's aligned towards what we call the human food, it will start a cleansing process of itself because it is a self-regulating mechanism. Yes. And the further we move up the pyramid, and I'll, I'll have you bring up a slide on this, the, the further we move up this pyramid, towards these cleaner and more refined foods, the deeper and the quicker the body will go into its detoxification process. So the ultimate um, detox will be commanded when one conducts a water fast. Now that's um, it's an extreme version of it, that's an example. But just by consuming fruit alone, the body will go into a very, very uh, a deep detox uh, commanded by um, the fruit releasing the, the, the stored acids that are in the system. So yeah, you've nailed it. And then part of this is dealing with this topic of parasites, which few people like, um, few people enjoy talking about. And they're often horrified to learn that they're not as far up the, uh, the food chain as they thought they were. <laughs> okay, so that's coming up in, in our next session. And what I love is we're moving towards really getting the body back to doing what it does best, you know, getting its own intelligence back because it knows what to do. It knows how to cleanse. It knows how to heal itself. And that's also the beautiful thing of doing a water fast where many people are horrified. It's like, what do you mean? Only water? Um, how can that be right? You've got to eat. Mm, actually, you know, when the body's sick, it actually doesn't want food because it needs to go in and do what it does best, which is heal itself. So really, we're putting in its optimum space and place to do that. And I, I thank you for sharing your wisdom once more as we detox and, and uh, get our natural birthright of health and vibrancy and energy back. So thank you yeah. once again, Malcolm. We have a better version of ourselves. 
Totally, totally. Oh, absolute pleasure. Speak to you again soon.